Okay, here we have the, the no sew block already done that we did in the previous video. But now I've discovered that we do have a hole in the middle of that wreath. It's a large hole that I want to fill with the same background fill. I want it to be the same proportion. I actually am even going to take it further. I want to make it look like it actually stitched a continuous pantograph across there. This I think it's like the center the center one. I want to make it look like it really was designed right with that pattern. Um, there are things that we probably could have done to just bring it up again and make it look um, look like it, but I just want to really be authentic with, with the background and make it look like it just stitched with it. So this is this is a little method that I came up with, and I don't know if it's going to be the easiest. It's something that I kind of thought through that would work, and I was playing around with it, and I, it worked very well for me. So this is what I'm showing. There may be other ways to do this, but for right now, this is what we've got to go by. Um, I'm going to look at this, and what I decided to do was make a block, another block, this the shape of the inside of this wreath. This would be a lot like if you were going to be doing applique. You know how when you have applique, and you can go to Helen's video because she shows how to trace around a block. She's doing echo, but it's still the same procedure to trace around your applique shape and actually make it a block. Well, we're going to shape, we're going to, to trace around the inside of this wreath and make it a block. We're going to be making a block while we're doing it. So in order to do that, we're going to add a block. We're going to, we're not at the clipping. We're, our end result, we're going to be making a clipping block, but we have to bring up the block. We have to make the block first before we can even use the clipping block. So it's going to be a standard block and we're going to trace on quilt. And we would take the trace on quilt and we would go inside we would go inside and we would just move the machine and trace all around this inside. Okay? Now, the thing is, I already did this. <laughs> I did this before I started because I didn't want to do this on camera because I'm really bad. But, <laughs> but we can actually just take... Um, ah, let me stop that. Okay, I'm going to get out of this because I already did that. Okay. I already did that. I traced around and made a block. And now what I'm going to do is load it from the block catalog. Down here, oops, let me make sure it's in the camera still. Down here it says load from block catalog. I already made that shape into a block, and before it comes up, I need to warn you, it's pretty bad. But remember, we're just trying to fill the background. We're not doing the stitch, we're not trying to make a stitch in the ditch and make it look pretty. We just need to give a, an area for that pattern to go into. So. Um, I'm going to let's see load. I'm going to load from the catalog this block, and I've made it inside pattern shape. So I'm going to bring that up. And it didn't come up, as you can see, it didn't come up very good. But I'm just going to move it into place where I think it would fit pretty good. And I think that's how I traced it. Actually, let me scale that down. This is a different. I traced it before. Can even change the width. I can modify this shape so it really fits in there better. I think I'm going to have to do that. Kind of move, kind of just arrange that. That's close enough. You know, it's not good. It's not perfect. It's just kind of that shape is what I need. So I'm going. But remember, this is still a block. See those registration, those little squares. It's still a block. So I hit finish. And I hope I didn't go too fast when I did that. Let me let me just go through the steps again. I am bringing up a block in the middle of this area here. A, a block I created earlier when I brought this up before. If you didn't create it, all you have to do is trace around that shape and, and save the block pattern in your block catalogs and then bring it up later. So I hope I didn't tangle things up by explaining that too much. So I'm going to hit finish. Now I'm going to add a pattern. I'm going, I need to add that background pattern again. Um, it, because right now it's, it clipped it out because of the no sew and it's not there. So I need to add a pattern. I need to add a pattern. It's going to be a pantograph, just like before. I'm going, now it's asking me what block to, am I going to use. I'm going to select the big block. I need to get the pattern in there again, the same as I did the first time. I'm going to go bring that pattern back out. 
right here. And I remember that I set it at four the first time. So I'm going to set it at four. I want it the same. Oops, oops, oops. I got too far. I'm jumping too far. Okay, I'm going to set the, the height at four again. This is what I did to begin with. I turned the clip on. I'm going to skew it over. And if you look closely, what's going to happen is it's actually going to put the same exact pattern right on top of the background fill. I'm using that same exact pattern on the background fill. And look what happened. It sort of turned red. It's red where the where the no sew pattern is, and it's um, it's black or blue, whatever color that is. It's blue where it's right on top of the old, not the old, but the original background fill. But to me, that was an easy way to keep all of those proportions. All I did was remember what height I, I used. I used a four inch. You can write that down when you first do the no sew, whatever. So right now it's it's all over the place. If I were to stitch that pattern in three rows, it would actually go right on top of my pattern right now. So I'm done with it. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to finish that up. Let me go back to show you the full screen. All right, now what I want to do, it's talking about the jump stitches. And here again, because I made it on the outside, we don't have any. Clipping confirmation, um, it's asking me how many jump stitches, whether I want to do a continuous or whatever. I'm not. I'm going to click right through that because it's all nice and clean on the outside. Yes, I'm going to, to do that. Now uh, what I need to do is add a clipping block. Um, I'm going to add a block. This That shape that I made, I'm going to turn into a clipping block. And Helen already did a video on that also in using the clipping block. But I'm using the clipping block inside this pattern kind of the same way she was using it. Um, so I'm going to add a block and it's going to be a clipping block. Select the patterns to be affected. Well, I'm going to kind of zoom in and see what's going on here. What patterns? I know, I think all I needed to pick was this first pattern because the first pattern is, as you can see, it covers that inside. I don't need to go click on all of them because well, I could. It wouldn't really matter. I did that the first time when I was practicing, actually, and it didn't matter. But I know that that's just going to fit right in there, so I don't need to select them all. So I'm going to hit Continue. How do you want to define the block? I want to um, select an existing block. I already talked about these on the one video, how I want to select the block. Remember, if I 